Today, I'm talking to Tom. Tom was 458 pounds and a type 2 diabetic. He had an A1C of 14 and was on 250 units of insulin a day and a host of other medications. That was until he found the carnivore diet. Just before we get started guys, do me a massive favor and smash like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel and I am grateful for your support. Let's meet Tom. Tom, I think you told me um, at one stage you were about, you're on the carnivore diet now, uh, but at one stage you're about 458 pounds, is that right? Yeah, that was my highest weight. When I, I went to the doctor, I was 458 pounds and I didn't have any answers except take more insulin. I, I just kind of gave up on doctors. <laughs> so. Right, right. So, and, uh, so can, yeah, can you tell us a little bit more about that time of your life? Yeah, so I mean, I first got diagnosed as diabetic when I was 29. And first, I started out with just taking some pills. My weight was about 270. And, um, and then it, you know, it got worse. Um, I lost 80 pounds in there by fasting for eight weeks. Um, and it got a lot better. But then, of course, I started eating bread and carbs again, and it all came back on even more. And uh, they put me on insulin, started out like 20 units a day. And it had worked its way up to where I was taking a concentrated insulin of like 250 units a day. And I was taking like 35 units of Novolog, which is a fast acting insulin whenever I ate. And I still had A1Cs in the 14s. And I was following, I've been to several dietitians. I followed their advice to the letter, you know, for two years to the letter. I ate my bowl of oatmeal with my half a banana. You know, I had my snacks. I I did everything they said to do. And every time I went back to the doctor, I put on another 10 pounds and my diabetes was worse. So um, I was on three or four blood pressure medications. My blood pressure was completely out of control. Uh, without any medication, my blood pressure would get up to 80 over something. Um, on medications, they couldn't get it much below 160 or 170. Um and, you know, all those medications really make you feel terrible. And I just felt like I was walking death. You know, I struggled to get out of bed, get to the coffee pot in the mornings and get to work. Um, I was taking metformin, two grams of metformin every day. Um, and, you know, it was just completely out of control. I had a endocrinologist, a regular care doctor, I had a cardiologist, I had a uh, he, uh, a uh, hematologist, who I think is a kidney doctor. He was also a blood pressure specialist. I have an eye doctor because I've got diabetic retinopathy, which is pretty permanent, you know, but it seems to have stabilized. Now it's not getting any worse. Uh, and I have macular degeneration. And they were giving me shots in my eyes and burning parts of my retina with lasers to stop the bleeding. And it was just, it was just a mess. It was a complete mess. Wow. So about four, about four years ago, I started doing keto and um, I had great success with keto at first. I, in six months, I lost 101 pounds. Um, the diabetes had pretty much gone away. I had to take quit taking insulin like within the first three days that I started eating keto because I was getting low blood sugar. Um, but then it kind of just hit a plateau. And then I started putting some weight back on and, you know, I kind of struggled with it and, um, you know, I was keeping things kind of under control. I wasn't really losing much, putting a little back on. And so, I don't know, three or four weeks ago, I decided to stop eating seed oils. Because one of the things I had done since I went keto is I was looking for low-carbohydrate alternatives. And one of those is mayonnaise. Now, I used to go through a jar of mayonnaise once every three months. Now, I was going through two or three jars a week, right? Because I would just pile it on the meat and eat it. And um, I saw a video with Dr. Barry talking about that and talking about seed oils causing macular degeneration as well. And so I decided to cut out the seed oils and it just put me right back on track. I mean, like I, I'm down like 15 pounds and I'm right back on track and I'm feeling great again. And uh, mostly I just eat meat, but I do eat some vegetables. Um, I'm probably about 90% current. Wow. Okay. 
So, so sorry, right? You started at four fifty eight. Right now, what's your weight? Uh, my weight yesterday morning was two eighty nine. Two eighty nine. Wow. Nice. Yeah. So, so I still have a long way to go, but I'm way farther ahead than where I was. Yeah. yeah. And so, um, just just to take a step back to some of the things you spoke about there. Um, I uh, I live in Japan, so I'm not a hundred percent aware of the the medical system, how it works in the U.S. But with so many doctors at at you know when things were the worst for you, with so many different doctors, you mentioned endocrinologists and hematologists and all sorts of doctors, that must have got expensive. Yeah, so I worked at a, a hospital at the time, so our health insurance was really good. So, but it was still. I was spending, you know, 400 bucks a month on just copays going to all these different doctors, which wow. I also have a familial polyposis gene. So my dad and a bunch of his brothers all died from colon cancer. So I have a gastroenterologist. And I have to get scoped every couple of years. Um, so, you know, it was just constantly doctor's appointments, different procedures. The cardiologist were always doing like tests where they're injecting radioactive stuff into me and scanning me and you know it was just one thing after another um, i made really good money at the time better money than i make now but um i just you know i still had another four or five hundred dollars a month in prescriptions you know so it was like you know a grand a month mm. Yeah, and, and you can buy a lot of chuck roast for a thousand dollars a month you know? <laughs> right <laughs> so so uh, regarding the medications like you you said um at one point at the worst point you were on was it 250 units did you say of insulin a day yeah so 250 units of the humulin u500 which is a slow acting insulin mm. and it's five times concentrated because when you take that much you'd have to fill up three or four syringes so they make it five times concentrated so you can still fit it in one syringe um oh. And then uh, I and then I was on Novolog, which is the fast acting. That's what they call the bolus insulin, and the slow acting is a basal insulin. So I, when I would right before I would eat, I'd have to take my fast acting insulin, so my blood sugar didn't spike too high after I ate. Right. So so and there was the insulin, and the, there was also another uh, a number of other medications. So, like when you're thinking about insulin and the other medications throughout a day, what did that actually look like for you in practice? Um, you know, you just you have to. I take my my slow acting in the morning, but then I have to take my Novolog with me to work because I have to take it before lunch. Uh -huh. um, you know, and you, you have all your pills. So I was on four pills of metformin. And I, you could take them all at once, but it has some negative gastrointestinal effects. So I would break them up throughout the day. Um, and then on my blood pressure medicines, and one of those blood pressure medicines I had to take three times a day. So, you know, just kind of keeping that all organized and that, that's a job just to keep track of it. I remember we went to uh, Florida and I lost my insulin and <laughs> we're, we're on our way back, but it's an 18 hour drive to get home. And you can't in the states if your prescriptions in this state, you can't go get it filled in another state, right? Uh -huh. So even though I had a refill, I had no way to refill it, you know. And I'm driving back from Florida with really high blood sugar, you know. There's just constantly having to keep track of that kind of stuff is really, really annoying. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, I can I can imagine. And you still feel bad, you know. You still feel terrible. <laughs> and so. At this stage, have you been able to get off of most or all of those things? I'm on no prescription medications today. Um, wow. My blood pressure is still a little high. It's at 150 or 160 or something, but it kind of comes down a little bit at a time as I lose weight and as I've been doing the pure carnivore. I also went to the chiropractor, and he cracked my neck, and I just felt my blood pressure go way down. Uh, mm. So, yeah. Um, and there is something about like a vertebrae in your neck that can get misaligned and cause high blood pressure. So I don't know, but, um, it's just, uh, you know, I, I talked to my doctor, I said, I'm just not willing to keep taking the blood pressure medicine. It makes me feel like crap. And I would rather, 
you know, go out and work in the yard, work in the garden, fix cars, ride roller coasters, spend time with my family, and then sit at home with my bottle of pills and no energy. Mm. You know, and you know, 150 over something, something else is probably gonna kill me before that does, you know. Yeah. So. And so so what um what's your doctor's reaction been to this over the last few years as your weights come down well, and so when I refused to take my blood pressure medication, um, I got a letter a couple of weeks later from the doctor saying that I've been dropped as a non-compliant patient. So I'm kind of looking for a primary care doctor right now. I'm trying to find one that understands keto. Uh, but yeah, they just, uh, at first he was all for keto, but he was like, well, you're eating your vegetables. You have to eat your vegetables. You know, and I don't think he really understood, you know, the, you just, you know, most doctors don't understand nutrition and humans. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we're kind of fighting back and forth. And uh, I just, I need to find another doctor that's more aware of keto and carnivore and is that, willing to work with me to heal myself. That surprises me so much that a doctor can just send you a letter and say, okay, you're dropped. I'm done. Yeah, they're, they're under pressure by the insurance companies to make sure patients are compliant and taking their medications uh, so that they okay. don't end up in the hospital with complications. They don't want them to end up with a stroke. They don't want them to end up with a heart attack. They don't, you know, so they're really trying to push those medications. And the other thing is trying to get me to take with statins. And I'm just like, I'm not even going there. <laughs> I'm just not even going there. Uh, yeah. And my cholesterol, my, my good cholesterol was high. My triglycerides were really low. And my LDL was in the normal range. And he said, well, we still just want to put you on statins as a preventative measure. You know, so I was like, oh, no. <laughs> I don't as a preventative measure. Yeah. So here's a drug that's not going to help you at all. We'll give it to you as a preventative measure against yeah. something you're probably not going to experience. Yeah. I mean, uh, the the differences between medical systems aside like in japan yeah they they'd be dying to get me on a statin here because my like my ldl is yeah. 369 <laughs> so you know they're, they're they're like yeah i i got a d or something on my my latest uh blood work so yeah i saw that yeah you know. yeah what is it like for you are you um committed to carnivore for the long term is this like this yeah, is it now especially Especially now that I've dropped the seed oils, I feel really good. I mean, I noticed like we went and rolled coasters at the uh, uh, amusement park. It's called Kings Island here, um, mm. and I was just going all day long. I just, I mean, not not high intensity, but it it's just the energy just keeps coming, right? It just it just keeps coming, and like my my son is not keto at all. And my wife is sort of keto, but she still eats some carbohydrates and stuff. And they, they're like, we're hungry. We want to eat. I'm like, I want to ride coasters. You know, I don't, I'm not even hungry right now. Right. And and I I went ahead and ate some of her leftover chicken from her lunch, just the little bits of chicken. And uh, then I didn't eat till I got home later that night. And I, I had eaten at 630 in the morning, you know, so like all day. And my relationship with food has just changed so much. Like the more carnivore I get, the more of that changes. It's really hard to explain to somebody that's addicted to sugar because they're just always thinking about food. They're always thinking about what they're going to eat next, you know, and it's just such a big part of them. And when you sit down and say, Oh, that's okay. I'm just going to drink a water. I'm not hungry there. You know, I've even had, I'm like, well, we can, uh, we can pay for your lunch if you can't afford it, you know, it's like no, it's not that. I'm I'm just not hungry, and they just they they, they, they don't understand that. Um, and I wouldn't have understood it before I became keto carnivore either. You know, um, it just people are kind of stuck in that trap. Yeah, of eating sugar all the time. It's like a superpower, right? It's <laughs> like no one would ever imagine that you can suddenly release yourself from this it's almost like prison or binding of, you know, being addicted to food. It, it, it I mean, yep. it's, it's, I, I guess it's like, you know, having an addiction to some kind of, some kind of serious drug, you know, like yeah. I mean, yeah, sugar yeah. is a serious drug, but you know, but, like, I mean, it's like being addicted to heroin or something. 
I mean, when your blood sugar drops and you still have insulin, your 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 blood sugar is getting low, and you have a biological need to get some energy right now, yeah. you know. And you know, it, you know. So before I had high blood sugar and became diabetic, I had problems with low blood sugar. And you think, like, how do you convert from low to high? Well, it's because you're having to produce more and more and more insulin to get that sugar out of your blood. And then the sugar drops, but the insulin hasn't dropped yet. So you get low blood sugar. So eventually you can't make enough insulin. And then you get the high blood sugar. So, you know, there's a real biological drive for people to keep eating sugar, right? Mm -hmm. And that's, that's the survival mechanism that's built into humans, except you used to only be able to get sugar when you found a honey tree or when the peaches were ripe. Right. And it helped you get through the winter. Sugar wasn't just available everywhere. It wasn't 90 percent of the grocery store. Mm. But yeah, now it's now it's available within arm's reach 100 percent of the time. Right. Yeah. And, um, and the doctors are telling people it's healthy. You know? <laughs> yeah. And yeah. yeah, well, there's just so many people out there like dietitians, doctors, everyone's like, oh, yeah, you need to eat your carbs. You need to eat this. You need to eat that. You need to eat your cereals. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. Um, so what what does a day of eating look like for you now? Um, I normally, uh, a lot of times I skip breakfast. I just eat when I'm hungry. I don't really have a specific time. The other day I woke up at 3 in the morning. I was hungry. I cooked a bunch of meat. I ate it. I went back to bed. Um, and then I didn't eat again until that evening, you know, um, but, you know, sometimes I'm hungry when I come home for lunch. So I eat then, but I, I eat once or twice a day. Um, and, uh, mostly just meat. Um, you know, so I wrote down here, some of the types of food that I eat, I would say I'm 90% meat. Uh, beef is number one. Like I love beef. It makes me feel great. It's, you know. Uh, but I eat chicken too, like legs and thighs, the fatty parts of the meat. Um, I eat shrimp. I eat some fish, I like fish, tilapia, cod, tuna. I like orange roughy. is a fish we have here that's really good. Uh, clams, oysters, bacon, pork, um, you know. And sometimes I just kind of mix a little bit of that all together on a plate, and I eat like three pounds of meat, you know. Um, I just basically eat until I'm not hungry anymore. Like, oh, it doesn't taste good anymore. I'm I'm done. Mm. Um, but for dairy type stuff, I'll, I'll have eggs, butter, I have a little tiny bit of sour cream now and then, and I have a little bit of cheese every now and then. Um, but I don't eat cheese and sour cream with every meal. Um, I used to. I used to eat a lot of sour cream before I went to a more carnivore diet, and I think that was part of the reason my keto wasn't working. And vegetables, I will eat them occasionally, maybe once or twice a week with a meal. Um, broccoli is kind of my standby, and I cook them until they're mush. I like them really soft. Mm -hmm. But I'll have cabbage, I'll have Brussels sprouts, onions, and once in a while a treat is spaghetti squash with some meatballs and a little bit of pasta sauce that I make out of my own garden, and it doesn't have any sugar in it. Um, and another treat that I like to have is zucchini uh, squash fries, uh, fried in bacon grease. So, yeah. All right. So you're, you're eating once or twice a day. Basically, you're eating to satiety and, you know, you have the treats occasionally. So you, as you said before, you're about 90% carnivore. So, yeah. I mean, let me quickly do the math in my head. 458 to about, sorry, you said 270 something. 278. Uh, 289. 289. 289. So... It's just under 200, about 160, 170 pounds, right? Yeah. So yeah. You, you talked about how um, you like riding roller coasters. Is yeah. that something that I, I, I don't know how it works because I don't like riding roller coasters, yeah. <laughs> but uh, so I've never actually been on one. Um, but uh, um, like when you were 458 pounds, was that not an option? Um, there was very few of them I could fit on. Um, oh, okay. And so, uh, I mean, that's kind of, I started riding one that I could fit on. So I, like, you know, five or six years ago, I was definitely afraid of roller coasters. I didn't like them at all. I didn't like the idea of them. I rode one when I was a kid and it scared me and I never wanted to get on another one. 
Mm. Well, they have this big swinging boat at King's Island. And so I started riding uh. that. At first, I was scared. And I was like, oh, this is fun. And then I moved on to another little tiny coaster called the Adventure Express. And I started riding that until I got used to it. And then I was like, I want to fit on some more coasters. So that's kind of part of the uh, driving factor to get me on keto and start losing some weight was I wanted to fit on more coasters. And there's still a couple of them I just can't fit on. Um but most of those have these leg restraints that come down and my legs are just too big. I can't lock them around my legs. Mm. It's not even my belly at this point. Uh, but yeah. And, and I just started riding bigger coasters. We started going to Florida and riding coasters. We went to South Carolina and rode coasters. We went to Michigan <laughs> rode coasters. Oh, nice. And now, <laughs> now the taller and faster and the more times they go upside down, the better. Right. I, I just love it. Wow. So, <laughs> you're making me feel queasy just thinking about it I'm just... <laughs> the only the only thing even resembling a roller coaster that i've been on is something called the tower of terror in uh disney so uh, in japan okay. we've got a disneyland but there's also something called disney sea here and okay. that's like more of an adult kind of um themed disney park and uh they've got something called the tower of terror and basically it's a haunted mansion you go up the top and then you get in an elevator and it just free fall drops okay and yeah i've I been in that and that was that was that was pretty pretty bad i that was one of those one-time things i've done it once so i'm not going to yeah. do it again um i haven't done any of the drop towers because i'm definitely afraid of heights Right. And I know that sounds weird because I go on roller coasters that have a 325 foot drop, but I don't like going up the hill. I don't want to look around and see anything. But then once we're over that hill, the adrenaline kicks in and it's just all fun from there. You know? Ah, okay. Okay. So, um, how, how has, um, how has your daily life improved in from between when you started to where you are now? I just, I feel better. I don't feel like I'm going to die. I'm not walking around with aches and pains in my joints constantly. So I had a torn rotator cuff at the time, and they said I was going to have to probably have surgery on that. Um, I had a bad knee, which was always hurting. I was always taking aspirin and Tylenol and stuff to try to help, uh, just to try to get through the day. And it's just all you can do to, like, get out of your car, walk into work, do your job, come back home. And you just, you know, when I used to go to Kings Island, when I was really fat, I mostly just sat on the bench. You know, I'd walk from this bench to this bench and my wife and son would go ride a coaster and I'd walk to the next bench. And we did that for four hours. And the next day I would hardly be able to stand up. I had plantar fasciitis. So it just felt like I was walking on glass the next day when I got up. I fretted some walking. It just really painful. Um and now I can walk all day at Kings Island, you know, but um, just all the, that stuff has gone away, all the achy joints. In fact, I uh, I drilled uh, a year ago, I, I uh, actually used a hit air hammer and put a three eighths inch bit two inches into the side of my knee. And uh, I mean, I couldn't even walk afterwards, but I eventually hobbled into the hospital They cleaned it out and checked it and scanned it and said it didn't hit anything too major and that just healed up and completely went away and doesn't hurt at all um like like my body's ability to heal is a lot better i drilled a hole into the bone in my finger right here at christmas oh. time oh. and um, it's pretty oh. much all healed up now and you know i didn't even bother to go to the hospital i just stuck my head on it you know <laughs> um so like 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 healing but i mean i do a lot of stuff that's rough on my body fixing cars gardening you know i'm always doing something that hurts me um and it used to be like you know i would get a cut on my hands and when i was really diabetic you know it would take two months to, to heal or three months it just didn't heal and now things heal in a few days so that's been nice um I've started to notice here lately that like dark skins, um, I had like a diabetic ulcer on my leg and it's healed up, but it's always had a pretty bad scar there. But that scar tissue is starting to heal and go away now. It's starting to look lighter and more normal. Um, 
So, yeah, I mean, my life has changed a lot. I'm a lot more active. I can do a lot more stuff. And, you know, I don't have to, like, go into work and be like, okay, you're going to pretend like you don't hurt and look happy and say hi to everyone. I'm generally happy to be at work and say hi to everyone, you know. And that's massive, so, right? That That is yeah. such a massive thing. Yeah. To actually feel happy and not just be feigning it, you know. It's Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, and like, you know, I'm the one that's like, I'm ready to go. Let's get some work done. And, you know, <laughs> everybody else is like, oh, it's Monday. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Why is he so happy? <laughs> yeah, you know, I find myself walking along, humming, whistling, and I'm just, I'm just happy. You know, I, I can't explain it. Um, that's uh, one of the things about, especially as I've gone more pure carnivore. I'm just a really happy, non grumpy guy. Like things don't irritate me and annoy me here much mm. you know i don't get mad when someone pulls out in front of me in traffic you know i just i'm like well they probably didn't see me it's okay <laughs> it's just mm. <laughs> a much more even keeled yeah 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 I, I i kind of feel the same way a little bit i feel like uh you know carnival gave me back much more self-control and that self-control extends over like your reaction to things. You're more more able to kind of step back a little bit more and look at situations objectively or kind of put yourself in that situation if it was you and that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Nice. So what's the reaction been um with friends and family? Um, well, I mean, so um most of my family is, is overweight and diabetic as well. Uh, uh, and they're kind of trapped in the cycle of, of eating and taking shots and pills and stuff. Um, I've tried to talk to them, but um, my mom's listened somewhat. She's cut out some of the carbohydrates. Um, but, uh, I, I, you know, one of the things is people, you know, if I go to my son's birthday party and they have a birthday cake, they all expect me to eat a piece of it, you know. And so the last couple of years, I've just been like, well, give me like a fourth of a piece, you know. But this year, I'm just like, no, I'm not going to eat that. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm going to have a hamburger or something else, you know, or just not eat. Because uh, it's just not worth it to eat foods in a social situation because you want to fit in with every, what everybody else is doing and it makes you sick. It's just kind of crazy. Um, you know friends and stuff you know they're telling me i'm gonna have a heart attack i'm gonna die and you know that's crazy and you know i'm willing to talk to people who want to learn about what i'm doing and take it with an open mind but if they think i'm crazy then i just i just kind of you know i'm still nice to them or whatever but i just don't talk to them about food you know mm. um I, I avoid going out to lunch with people uh, because a lot of times I just don't eat at lunch or I get four hamburger patties and I load it down with salt. You know, I carry my own little personal salt shaker, with Redmond's real salt, and <laughs> load it down. And, you know, they're like, what are you doing? You know? <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. And yeah, the people my, that haven't known me when I was really heavy, like 458 pounds, they look at that and they're like, well, that's why he's so fat now. And they don't realize that I yeah, I've lost 160 pounds eating that. But it's it's really cool that you can go out to lunch, and even if you weren't eating something, you can just quite happily sit there and enjoy the conversation or whatever, and not worry about the fact, not not feel this craving to eat something, right? Yeah, like so. Yesterday, I I ate like at oh about five in the morning. And then I had this uh, symposium thing to go to, and they had a breakfast there. Everybody went and got their breakfast. I just went and got a cup of coffee, and I'm sitting there talking to everybody, and they're like, well, there's food in there. There's biscuits and gravy. There's this. There's that. I'm like, well, I'm I'm kind of on a carnivore diet. I don't eat that stuff. Well, they got bacon. I'm like, it's okay. I'm not hungry right now. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and then, you know, I just sat there and talked to them, you know, while they scarfed down their biscuits. You know? And mm -hmm. I didn't. You know, I wasn't looking at those biscuits like it was something I wanted at all. It just, it wasn't that it offended me or that it made me feel sick or 
I just really had no feelings about it at all. I was focused on, you know, talking to him. Yeah. It's like, I, I, I think the best way of describing my feeling towards food in situations like that now is it's not love. It's not longing. It's not hate. It's nothing like that. It's just indifference. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, exactly. oh, it's there. It's like any other object in the room, you know? Yeah. And yeah. yeah, I'm going to enjoy my black coffee or my sparkling water or something and I'm done. I'm fine. Yeah. 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 Uh, nice. Um, so, what about uh, your son and your wife? You said you said that your wife is kind of half keto. Yeah, um, I mean they're both really thin and healthy, right? They uh -huh. don't have a diabetes problem or a weight problem. Uh, okay. Uh, my wife has given up the seed oils because she's having back problems and stuff, and she said that's gotten much better. Mm. Um, so um, the only really like plant based oil I eat is in my avocado oil based mayonnaise. And I just got some rendered duck fat to try making mayonnaise with. So I'm going to try that soon. But avocado oil is a lot better than a fully refined processed seed oil, you know. Mm. Um, but and I use that mayonnaise much more sparingly. I don't just pile it on, mostly because it costs $12 for a little tiny jar of it. You know? Oh, wow. <laughs> uh, and so, um, but I just use it much more sparingly and I don't eat it every time I eat just once in a while. I want a little treat and I'll have some mayonnaise. Yeah. They're not diabetic or anything. You know, my oldest son, who's an adult, he is severely overweight and pre-diabetic and he's been on keto now uh, for about two months and he's real dirty keto. He's doing the artificial sweeteners like crazy. Um, he made this special caramel stuff out of allulose and, He's like, here, try some of this. I'm like, no, that's okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, he's lost 43 pounds. Oh, he's lost so, 43. Nice. Yeah. So, um, but, you know, I was like that in the beginning, too. I was hitting the artificial sweeteners and the seed oils really heavy, but then I just hit a plateau where it kind of stopped. And yeah. so I got rid of the seed oils and, the, and mm. mostly artificial sweeteners. So I am down to one can of diet soda a day. And right. that's great because before I was drinking, you know, 12 to 15 cans a day. So, you know, I'm, I'm working on getting off the artificial sweeteners. I don't put artificial sweetener in my coffee. I just drink it black now. And I drink like tea. Like I just made some iced tea in a jar. And then I have sparkling water once in a while as a treat. Um, and that's pretty much all I drink that in water. Nice. Wow. And uh, so, what uh, what would you say to someone if they are considering doing this kind of diet, or the, or they uh, they're in a situation where they uh, you know they need to drop the weight or they need to get the diabetes under control? Um, what would you recommend? Well, I would I would say you know you just have to start with watching the carbohydrates. That's the biggest, most important thing is to get the carbohydrates out of there. Um, and, you know, if you're not comfortable with it, don't worry about seed oils at first. I mean, be mindful of it, maybe eat less of it when you can. But if you want to have a little peanut butter with some hydro hydrogenated soybean oil, you know, go ahead. Um, but really get those carbs down uh, to, you know, 20 or 30 a day um, and you'll start feeling better. Um, if you need artificial sweeteners at first, I think that's fine. I mean, you're a carbohydrate addict, but you have to be aware. The artificial sweeteners for me, I can be going along all day, not eating. And I'll be like, I'm going to have my diet, my diet soda. And 15 minutes later, I'm like, man, I'm kind of hungry because it created an insulin response because of my body tasted something sweet. So, um, you, you know, but worry about, you know, seed oils and artificial sweeteners. And once you get through those carb cravings and you get in, you're on the other side of it, you'll just see that your world's different, you know? Mm. That's a good way. Of, that, that's a good way of looking at it, right? You just go through, uh, gradually get the things out, start with the sugar and the carbohydrate and then get everything else out. And then you're going to be, you're going to see the world's very different when you're on the other side. That's a, yeah. that's a really good way of looking at it.
I think a lot of people, they're just doing what they do and they're, that's normal for them to get through their life, to take their pills, to take their insulin, to, you know, whatever. They're just doing what they do. And I mean, everybody hits that point where they, they finally have gone through enough pain that they're willing to make a change, right? And that's what it was for me. I went through enough pain. I watched some videos from Dr. Barry and I was like, hmm, about Dr. Barry's book. And I read that. I was like, hmm. And so I was like, you know, I remember the first day I started, I had a piece of uh, Polish sausage for breakfast and that's all I ate. And I was still taking my insulin and I got to work and my blood sugar went really low and I had to eat some carbohydrates. Second day, I took half my insulin, did the same thing. My blood sugar still went really low and I had to eat some carbohydrates. Third day, I took no insulin and then I felt great, you know. And my, my A1C started out in the 14s, but in three months when I had it taken again on no insulin, I was in the nines, right? And then it keeps going down. So the last time I had it taken, it was a 6.1, which is still a little high, but I'm eating a lot of really good high quality heme iron. So my red blood cells live longer. So they're exposed to more glucose. So after a while on carnivore, your A1C can start to come back up a little bit. But I feel fine when I take my blood sugar, it's in a normal range, you know, so I'm not too worried about that. Yeah, uh, that's actually, it, it's funny you mentioned that, like my A1C is, uh, I'm pre-diabetic as far as my A1C is concerned, because the the levels are a little bit lower in Japan. And okay. um, yeah, so I think, what was it? I can't remember without looking. I can't remember five point six or six point five. I can't remember, but anyway, it's like point one over. So, like as far as Japan's concerned, I'm pre diabetic. But uh, yeah, I and think that's because that's you're eating uh, so much red meat and you're getting that good quality iron. Mm. And the, the A1C is based on a blood cell living three months. Mm. So vegans, their blood cells might live two months or a month and a half because they're not getting any iron. So they may have a low A1C and still have really high sugars, but somebody that's been carnivore for an extended period of time, they have very healthy red blood cells that live longer. Hmm. And then their A1C starts to come up because they're measuring it at four months or five months, not three months. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good to know. All right. So is there, is there anything else that you wanted to share while we're on Tom? Um, No, not really. Um, you know, just I, I feel good. Um, I wish that more people would give this a shot. You know, uh, we're at a point in the United States where most people are overweight. You know, they're they're riding around in little carts at the grocery store because they can't walk anymore. And we're talking like thirty year old people. You know, uh, and and. They're still buying Cheerios and oatmeal and all this stuff and, and thinking that they're being healthy. And it's like uh, people really, humans really seem to have a problem just eating their natural diet. No other animal in nature eats and gets fat. And, you know, it's just humans. And we always think that we're smarter, like we're going to figure this out. Like a, a vegan has to really carefully plan what they're going to eat, how they're going to eat it, how much nutrients they're going to get from this and how many vitamins for that and this. But a carnivore just eats meat. You know, he cooks it in five minutes and he's done. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's really important to realize what's the natural way of human eating, you know. And we've been just taught so long that cholesterol is bad for you. Um, and then saturated fat was bad for you. And now they're kind of admitting that those things aren't really a nutrient of concern. Um, and it's just a matter of getting the doctors to realize it too. Um, you know, just, you know, I'm not a doctor. <laughs> I don't know everything that doctors know, but I know that I feel great and I felt like crap before. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's generally how I judge my health is by how I feel. And you know, it's just, uh, you know, doctors, they have good intentions. They want to help people. I don't think they're bad people, but they just don't know. 
So it's going to be exciting to see how this continues. A lot of people say, I've had people come on my channel and say, uh, well, I'll be great. I'll be happy when this keto fad's over. It's like, it's not a fad. <laughs> it's the natural way we're supposed to eat. You know, I've had people come on my channel and tell me, well, I choose to do what my doctor tells me to and eat the way he tells me to and blah, 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 because he knows and he's a doctor and he's been to medical school and I trust him. <clears throat> and I'm really sticking to it after I had my second heart attack. <laughs> you know, it's like, nice. um, <laughs> you know, um, what you're doing is not working. And it's, uh, it's kind of insane, you know, but, um, uh, you know, most people on my channel are pretty supportive of what I'm doing. And I've had a couple of viewers reach out to me and tell me that I've inspired them to start eating keto and doing keto stuff. And they're losing weight and feeling better, too. And that really makes me feel good. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a it's a really, a really nice, a really nice story. So if if people want to reach out to you, Tom, how can they get in contact? Um. They can get me at uh, Tom at frugalprepper.rocks. It's F-R-U-G-A-L-P-R-E-P-P-E-R.rocks mm -hmm. is my email. Um, or they can just leave a comment on the channel. They can go to my channel and go under the uh, about section. That email address is listed there. Okay, yeah. cool. So I'll link to uh, I'll, I'll uh, link to your channel in the show notes so that people can check out your channel. Yeah, <laughs> thanks. Yeah. I'm glad that you're you eat uh, just like eggs and and beef in the mornings, right? Yeah, that's it. I, I yeah. like I've I've eaten for the day, so I'm not going to eat again. So, do you get hungry ever any time outside of that, or are you pretty much satisfied till the next morning? I, I'm satisfied till the next morning. So okay. I, I I don't know, um, you know what it's doing, but I guess I, I'm eating enough fat enough saturated fat that my body just doesn't need anything else for the rest of the day. Okay. Like I, last night I was sitting talking to um, doing an interview on zoom um, like at 1130 at night. And um, my stomach was rumbling a bit then, but like that's, that's the worst it ever gets like okay. that late at night. It gets a bit rumbly, but that's about it. Yeah. I found that when I first started, I wanted to do three meals a day. Like, you know, and what kind of crazy person say humans are supposed to eat three times a day? I don't know, right? That's just what we've always been told. Mm. But then as I, as I started eating that way, I was like, I'm just not hungry. I just don't want to eat, you know? Right. And so I'm getting closer and closer to that once a day, but I'm still eating most time twice in a day. So Yeah. I think, um, to be honest, I think I actually do better when I'm eating two meals a day. Okay. So, uh, I mean, if if you don't feel like you uh, can get to the point of doing one meal a day, I would say it's not something you want to push for. Um, yeah. Just because when I went on holidays, I was in Australia for a couple of weeks. And when I was in Australia, you know, you're going out and you're socializing with family and stuff. So I, I was having the big breakfast, but then, you know, we'd go out. And so I'd just order a steak or something when we we're out for dinner. And um, I felt much better. And I felt like I was getting, I didn't notice a change in the scales or anything, but I felt like my stomach was getting, like it was getting flatter. Okay. And so uh, I actually think I would do better on two meals a day. The only thing is now that I've got into the routine of one meal a day, I'm so much more efficient and productive and can do so much more because I'm never thinking yeah. about food anymore that I just stick to it. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I mean, I just decided to listen to my body now that I'm not tricking it with sugar and carbohydrates. Mm. My body tells me when it's hungry and it tells me when it's done and it tells me when it doesn't want to eat. Guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to click like and subscribe. And I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next video.